In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Well, welcome, and we welcome in a special way those viewing on our live stream. We're glad to have you with us. And as we come together on this second Sunday of Lent, let us first acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal a contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he, re he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your own beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All of this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord.
the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us, who will condemn Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather, was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, his clothes becoming dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say, they were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, this is my beloved son, Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. True story of a woman who had been going through a particularly trying time in her life. And instead of turning to God, as many of us do when real problems come, she simply made herself busier and busier burying herself in her work and in other activities. In the midst of this, she was seriously injured in a car accident and was hospitalized. And while in the hospital, she had time to reflect upon what had been happening in her life. She had time to pay attention, to close off everything else and just listen. 
it became for her a life-transforming experience, a new awareness of God's presence. And in her own words, she said, the one implicit feeling I had in this moment was a sense of freedom, of great being in all ways unencumbered. It was as though the windows of my life had been washed. It was as though some part of me had been left behind, a part that was old and hard. In that hospital bed, the world was a very private world, and I was quite alone. Then, all at once, I I was not alone. There was no increase in light, There was no sound, no motion. Lying utterly still, I was aware of a presence. And I was simply allowing myself to be claimed. I simply waited. Previously unable to accept, I was now accepting. I was allowing this grace to wash over me, to cover, to penetrate the self I had been, just as the tide rises to cover the, what formerly was dry and bare. Now I knew what this presence was. It was God. Here was the glory of his presence, patient presence. Feelings of wonder gripped my soul, and with that wonder, peace. For the, not the peace the world knows, but an at-oneness with God. And I understood, I understood that I had been forgiven. Throughout salvation history, God has sought to communicate to his people in various ways. Today's scriptures highlight his communication to Abraham, for example, our father in faith, through an angel messenger. And then what we hear in the gospel, through Moses and the law, Elijah and the prophets, and through their teaching, there along with Jesus in his transfiguration. However, As the divinity of Jesus was made known in that transfiguration, the Father declared his definitive communication with all of humanity in the person of his son, Jesus, when he exhorted his disciples, this is my beloved son, listen to him. the definitive communication of God the Father to you and to me. At this Eucharist, let us ask for the grace to take time each day to stop, close off everything else in our life, and just listen to Jesus, just like that woman that was hospitalized. Hopefully you don't need that experience to have that opportunity to have that experience of God like she did. But as we listen, may we experience, in effect, whatever God wishes to communicate to you and me. We may be surprised. We may be given that peace. But in any event, we know it will be a blessing. Let us stand now and together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. 
and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We make our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father, seeking God's mercy during this Lenten season of grace. For the church, that, we, that as we make sacrifices during this season of Lent, we may recognize everything we have in this life as a gift from God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our government leaders, that they may respect and protect the sanctity of all human life created in the image and likeness of God from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all impacted by the coronavirus and for divine intervention to stop the spread of the virus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who are preparing to receive sacraments at Easter, that in this Lenten season of preparation, they may draw ever closer to Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those suffering from any kind of affliction, that they may turn to God in their distress and obtain the aid and assistance they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our parishioners, that during this year of the Eucharist, and especially in this Lenten season of grace, we may each grow in our devotion to the true presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who have died, that the faithful departed, whose death is precious in the eyes of the Lord, may come to gaze on the face of Christ for all eternity, especially at this Mass for James Curran. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the petitions we received on our parish prayer line and for the personal needs and intentions that we offer in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, please hear and answer these and all the prayers we offer you this day through Christ our Lord. Amen. I now invite our parish Catholic Appeal Coordinator, David Madigan, to come up to speak with us briefly about this year's Catholic Appeal. Welcome, David. Good morning. I'm David Madigan, and I'm a member of the Parish Finance Council. Father Bob had asked me to introduce this year's Catholic Appeal. My wife and I have been active members of Foley Family and supporters of the Catholic Appeal since we moved to Duxbury in 1996. To say the last year has been challenging is an understatement. For Sarah and me, it's been prayer and our faith that has carried us through being able to rely on Holy Family for virtual and in-person Mass and virtual faith formation opportunities have kept us connected to the parish over this year. Holy Family would not be able to meet our needs without the help of the Archdiocese. The Catholic Appeal supports 280 parishes, including Holy Family, so that they can work locally to serve their parishioners. The outreach includes 51 central ministries, the Archdiocese provides Holy Family with many services, including financial and administrative systems, faith formation resources, liturgy direction, risk management, diaconate training, and human resources. The Archdiocese has also helped the Catholic schools serve as models for full-day in-person instruction in a safe environment. 
Sarah and I are thankful to God for the many blessings we have in our life and we feel a responsibility to share with those in need. We will be giving to the appeal again this year and I ask that those who gave last year please renew your commitments for the year. If you have never participated, I would ask you to consider a commitment this year. The challenges confronting the church and the greater community are compounded by the pandemic, making the need even greater. Our parish goal is one that we have always met and we exceed our goal. Half the funds that are over the goal return to Holy Family. So your gift helps our local parish with updating church infrastructure and continuing operations, especially during these challenging times. The Archdiocese of Boston serves many and the video will show some of the ministries and the outreach funded by the appeal. And I'd ask you to take a bulletin at the end of the day because it does have the commitment form for the appeal in it. Thank you. The impact on parish communities has been profound. No one could have ever dreamed would happen. And after 19 years, I thought I had seen everything. Having the support of a team you can rely on day to day is always important. But in this year, a year like no other, it's been critical, a game changer for all of us. During this period of the pandemic, uh, uh, we've seen how important uh, the work uh, of our team here has been in preparing the, the parishes and the schools to be able to, uh, to reopen and to do so in a safe way. For a pastor, <laughs> you really do rely on central, central ministries to, to help you there. It's uh, really reassuring to be able to, be, be able to turn to folks that are professionals. The, the last six months have been something that no one could have ever dreamed would happen. We had to wonder where do we turn. You're facing a novel situation. None of us has been through this before. The call to MC is very easy because she was so knowledgeable about what to do in giving clear instructions. I am a resource for the Archdiocese. I would get an inquiry from a pastor, Father Nestor or others, who would say someone on the staff has just tested positive for COVID. So then, you know, how long the quarantine? What about testing? When can they resume activities? We can rely on this team here to give us the proper directions. Doesn't mean things can't go wrong, but uh, we know we're doing the right thing. So when the lockdown came in the middle of March, uh, there were several of us at the Pastoral Center who used a variety of resources and systems to jump into action pretty much on a moment's notice so that we could make sure that the parishes could continue to do what they do best. I was able to assist Jack Riley um, at St. Agatha's in Milton through uh, the various benefit programs providing financial relief there. I think the sense was this team is there for whoever needs us to, to help the greater church, the church here in Boston. I would really thank God that, that we had a team who was really able to work together to provide the support for the parishes because they really needed us. It was incredible to see how quickly and how thoroughly and how comprehensively the Archdiocese was able to respond to the needs that we had. The risk management people are involved in so many different things. If we have a broken pipe and there's a leak, they handle our insurance claims. You know, one of the things that has helped us tremendously was the suggestion of the type of product that we use to disinfect in the churches. Our research brought us around to a product that was both organic, effective, and approved for defeating the COVID-19 virus, and also leaves the surface undamaged. We provide uh, and develop guidelines to prepare parishes um, for a variety of, of activities. We had a group of, of 10 that went to Haiti. We've been going as a parish to Haiti for now some 23 years and making the trip faithfully just about every year and never really had much of an issue. Unfortunately, this last trip down, we ended up getting caught in a considerable uprising across the country to the, to the point where it paralyzed the entire country 
the help of the archdiocese. Where do I begin? That swept in and got them out of a crazy, very difficult situation and brought them safely home. And I would tell you that within probably two hours, I, I'm holding a cell phone where I'm talking to gentlemen from the archdiocese. And Joe said, well, we're going to have to get you out of there. And the archdiocese has insurance to do that. He arranged through a third party for us to basically get airlifted out of Port-au-Prince. So the helicopters came in, they landed, and what we were told is run. So we picked up our bags, ran to the two helicopters, put them in quickly, and we had to just leave immediately. I can't thank them enough for, for what they did for us. Um, we came home safely. I never even knew that there was an office risk management, all what they did, and I'm very grateful for them. And I'm certain that it's the funding through the Catholic Appeal that allows the Archdiocese to create that foundation that, yes, we relied on in this particular case to an unbelievable degree. So we faced a very daunting challenge this fall, which was to reopen 100 schools. And so we needed advice from the Archdiocese Central staff on how we would implement the governor's health protocols in a way that we made sure we kept everybody in our building safe and to make sure that we didn't cause any spread. So we followed their advice and it worked out really well. And that teamwork is the only reason that we've been able to keep all the kids, all the faculty and the staff safe for this amount of time. And as a result of the success that we've had in our Catholic schools, it's actually led to a change in the statewide policy because we've proven that you can have kids in school safely. It's really been an incredible outcome. At the very heart of Catholic social teaching is the very simple and profound commandment, love one another. The social justice ministry is an answer to our calling from baptism. Our mission um, has really been implemented through a series of 12 annual convocations. Thanks to the tremendous support we received from Father Oscar Pratt and the people of the St. Catherine Drexel Social Justice Committee. We have assembled the most diverse and inclusive group of people that have planned and implemented this convocation. As we return to our passage from Matthew's Gospel and the song, We Shall Overcome, that the we in We Shall Overcome is not exclusively black folks and their allies, but all people, all of the children of God. So Ministry with Persons with Disabilities is a ministry that we have begun because there is a growing need for accessibility and awareness in our parishes for persons with disabilities. Many families with persons with disabilities don't have access to the sacraments or feel like they don't belong in the parish because their child has a disability. I think my relationship with my brother Artie who has autism has been the spark that definitely has ignited my passion for working with Ministry with Persons with Disabilities. So what we do is we work to provide accessibility and agency for these people because they have a special gift inside of them for the Lord. Every parish I've been in, I've had the support and the help of the Archdiocese through the help of the Catholic Appeal. Your parish, your school, your community is being helped by the Catholic Appeal. This is something that we're all a part of. It helps all of us, it helps each of us. Christ is the reason for our faith. Christ gave his life for us. Christ gave everything for us. He went out to people and served them. Um, we're trying to do the same thing. I'm a part of this team because I'm providing support to an organization that is doing great work and it's lasting. We have so many challenges in today's world. The church is working very hard to carry on our mission and it's a mission that we all share. The Catholic Appeal supports the team that supports your parish 
and I've come to see firsthand through the last several months with the pandemic how important that is. When you support the Catholic Appeal, you are supporting your parish. We cannot do what we do without the support of, of the Archdiocese. Further information about the Catholic Appeal can be found in today's bulletin and on our parish website. And I ask that you prayerfully consider what you will contribute to this year's appeal and be ready to make a financial commitment next weekend. And we thank you in anticipation of your generosity, which is greatly needed and will be much appreciated. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other some sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
I invite you to follow the invitation of your seating ambassador as you come forward to receive Holy Communion wearing your mask. On the last blue circle, we invite you just to please wait for the person in front of you to arrive at the blue square, at which time one would consume the host, and then please return to your same seat by way of the side aisle. And as you come forward, I ask you to place your hand open and flat, as flat as possible, just to avoid contact. And I thank you for your cooperation that makes distribution of Holy Communion during this time of pandemic possible. True, you guide. We look to. 
let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite you to join us this Tuesday at 7 p.m. for a Lenten evening of reflection here in the church when I will follow up on my Advent reflection on prayer and offer some helpful suggestions on how to listen to God. There will be an opportunity to go to confession with visiting priests. The reflection will also be live streamed on our website. Besides our Thursday evening confession times from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m., we're offering daytime confessions from 12 noon to 1 p.m. on Fridays during the first half of our period of adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. And if you're in a ministry here at Holy Family and have not yet completed a yearly quarry form, please do so as soon as possible. There are quarry forms in the narthex that you can complete today and have a priest or staff member sign off for you or make an arrangement with Kristen in our parish office. Today's special combined collection supports several ministries and good works around the world, including Catholic Relief Services, as well as those of the Church in Africa and the Church in Central and Eastern Europe, as well as the Military Archdiocese, the Home Missions, and the Black and Indian Missions. Please use these specially marked boxes at the doors of the church for your donation. Your generosity to this single collection for these various causes will be greatly appreciated. We have transitioned from monthly online parish bulletins to weekly bulletins now available both online and print copy. As you leave Mass today, you'll find the print copies of the parish bulletin on the racks attached to the offertory collection receptacles and there are copies of our Archdiocesan newspaper, the pilot, available in the narthex for you to take home as well. And as we leave Mass today, I invite you to follow the invitation of your seating ambassador as we empty the church from the doors, near the doors to the front. And if you do have your offertory collection envelope, if you use envelopes, you are invited now to place it in the receptacle as you leave Mass today. And we also invite those of you who may not have something on hand now to remember we have online option and also certainly you're welcome to mail in your contribution. We depend upon people's regular support of Holy Family to keep our operation going and we thank you very much for your faithfulness. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Please bow your heads for the blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body in the amazement of his apostles, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God, and have a wonderful week. My birthday, March 21.